Hey friends, welcome to Flight Test. My name is Josh. Today we're gonna to be showing you how to build the FT Easy plank from our FT Easy 3 starter pack. Now the reason why it's called a plank is because it's actually referring to the configuration that you see here. A plank airplane will oftentimes have a center fuselage and a rear vertical fin, but no horizontal tail. This is gonna give us a really neat characteristic that we oftentimes refer to as micro stalls. Because this doesn't have a rear tail, the stall can't get so deep that it actually drops really sharply. What you'll see is micro stalls where the wing will stall out and it'll quickly recover. This is a really cool feature for flying, but it also means we gotta be very careful on how we have our center of gravity. If the center of gravity is off, whether it's too nose heavy or tail heavy, the plane's simply not gonna fly well at all. All right, let's go ahead and discuss this more as we get into the build and get started. For this build, we're going to need our tape and our hot glue gun. Let's start by removing the three main pieces. We have our main wing, our dihedral gauge, our main fuselage, and the doubler for a fuselage, which is going to give us lots of durability and also help us with nose weight. We're going to go ahead and put our wing aside for right now, and we're going to put our attention towards the main doubler and our fuselage piece. The first thing that we want to do with our main doubler is we're going to go ahead and remove the center section of our paper. And we're going to do a practice test fit right over our fuselage like you see here. Now that we've test fitted everything, we're going to go ahead and put our attention and put a bead of glue right around the perimeter, just like that. We're now going to flip this right back over again lining up both the battery slot, the main wing slot, and our area for our control board. Make sure everything is nice and flush and let it dry for about 45 seconds. Now that our one side of the doubler is done, we're gonna go ahead and fold this over to the other side and make sure that our battery slot, our wire pass through, and our main wing slot line up perfectly. Once we're happy with that, same process as before, Notice I'm only really focusing the glue around the perimeter. I'm not getting too heavy with the glue. We don't need a lot for a lot of strength. I'm gonna fold this right over. And again, we're gonna go to our main battery slot, our wire pass through, and our main wing slot. During these steps, make sure you use the table as your friend and make sure that you take your time and make sure everything's aligned up properly. Doing this is gonna help your plane look better and also fly better. For our next step here, we're gonna put dihedral on our wing. Dihedral helps make the plane more stable and I'll show you how that works in a minute. To prep our wing, I'm just simply gonna drag my nail right down that center crease in our kit, and I'm gonna open this up. Just like that. Now that we have this opened up, I'm gonna take it to the edge of my table, and I'm just gonna do a couple little drags. And you notice a couple drags on the edge of the table, lots of the wing naturally crush up, so the one wing will raise up. Once we have that, I'm gonna slide on my dihedral gauge, just let it friction fit. And this is gonna give us the perfect amount of dihedral that we want. Our next step is to open up the wing. And I like to keep a little scrap piece of foam here. Once we have the wing firmly against the flat of the table and our dihedral gauge on, we can remove that extra glue because we don't need it. Make sure you let your wing sit for about a minute to make sure your hot glue is fully cooled. At this point, you're gonna see that you have a nice dihedral to your wing. The way that this is gonna work is when one wing drops, the low wing is gonna create more lift and cause the plane to wanna to lift up for you. Let's go ahead and put this in the airplane. I'm just gonna kinda of take my fingers and just kinda of crush down the one edge here just so the paper doesn't snag as we're passing it through. Little rocking motion. We're gonna slide this wing in until the hash marks on the leading and the trailing edge are right in the center. You're gonna notice that there's gonna be an equal distance on the rear trailing edge hash marks, and the front hash marks are gonna meet the edges of both sides of the fuselage perfectly. Now that our wing's installed, our next step here is to adjust our elevons. What elevons are are ailerons and elevators put together. Because this plane has no horizontal tail surface, the pitch control, which is your up and down, and your roll, which is banking right and left, is gonna be controlled by just simply two surfaces. This makes plank designs really, really simple to hook up and build when you're flying MRC. 
But what we need right now is a little bit of up deflection to make this plane have a little bit of what we call reflex. Reflex is where there's a little bit of up pressure on the back of the wing to cause the plane to track in a smooth straight area. Flying wings or planks without reflex in them simply won't fly. You're going to notice that our foam is about 3 16 of an inch thick. The amount of reflex we want is roughly going to be half of that. So to get that, I'm simply going to drag my nail right down the etch mark like you see here. And I'm going to carefully bend this up just a little bit. I want to bend this up until I see the Elevon's bottom surface cut right through the middle of our foam material. Just like this. Now this can be adjusted based on how you want to see your plane fly. If you want to put more nose weight in, you're going to need a little bit more reflex, but you'll get a faster flight characteristic. If you want less nose weight in there, you can reduce your reflex. This is all really adjustable, but this will be a really good spot to start, and then you guys can learn and discover from there. Once we're happy with that reflex, I'm just going to follow up with a little piece of tape right over that hinge line, and that's going to hold our adjustment in place. Let's go ahead and do the exact same measurement on the other side. All right, our airframe is now done. We have two different paths we can choose from this. We can choose to make this a chuck lighter where we throw it and it glides through the air, or we can make this RC. Now in our kit, we'll include a couple nuts here that you guys can use as nose weight to get the proper center of gravity. What center of gravity is, is basically it is the balance point that the airplane needs to fly properly. The center of gravity on all of our designs are going to be marked by two little dots. Some of them will be in different locations on the wings and some will even be on the fuselage to balance like our FT Easy Canard. In this case, we have our two little dots here and here. To balance this, we're going to go ahead and simply take one of our little nuts and we'll put it all the way up in the nose and we can move that back and forth to get it to balance where we want. Sometimes you may need two nuts to get it to balance properly. And you want to get it to where it'll bounce just slightly nose down. Simply by putting your fingers right over the dots, like you see here, and letting the weight of the airplane balance will be how you figure out your center of gravity. That looks pretty good. At this point, our next step is to take it outside and toss it back and forth and adjust the center of gravity and also our elevons to make it fly the way we want. But I'm gonna go ahead and remove this right now and we're gonna show you how to put the electronics in to make it fly radio control. For our electronics, we're gonna be using our FT Easy Pack. Now these electronics are exactly the same electronics that you actually would find in our FT Freighter that you see here. What we did is we had the electronics separated, so if you wanna design and build your own, you can simply pick up an FT Easy Pack 2 channel and then put those electronics in without taking apart your FT Freighter. With your Easy Pack, you're gonna get your transmitter, your battery, your motors and your control board and your charger. Everything you need, even including some extra props to be able to get you in the air. The first thing you wanna do is go ahead and put your battery on charge. The way we're gonna charge your battery is by first connecting our USB charger to either a USB adapter or a USB port in your computer. Once our USB port is connected, we're gonna make the connection with our battery connector and our charger and look for a red light. When the red light goes out, our battery is fully charged. Now that our battery's on charge, let's go ahead and put on our electronics. The first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna point the airplane pointing away from us. Now it's pointing towards you on the camera, but when you're building this, make sure that the tail is pointing towards you and the nose is pointing away. This is gonna make you the pilot in the cockpit. Once you have your plane in this configuration, you're gonna notice that our motors are marked left and right. We're simply gonna lay one motor on the left, our right motor on the right. Now that we have that, we can flip this over. And let's go ahead and swap our motors so they're still in the right orientation. To mount our motors, we're going to go ahead and first test fit it and slide it down firmly in place right into the slots. Now you can use hot glue to glue your motors in place, but what I'd recommend is simply using a piece of tape and put a piece of tape down right over the reinforcement flange that you have and then roll it around on the top surface of the wing. Do this on both sides. There's one. And there's two. And just to reconfirm, when we flip this over, we have our right motor on our right and our left motor on our left. Our next step, let's go ahead and pass through our wire lead on our right motor so we can make it easy to hook up to our control board. Now you're going to notice that our control board comes with a little plastic housing. This is actually the same housing that's on our FT Freighter, but we wanted to include this because in future designs, we could very well use this housing. But for right now, we're simply going to take our thumb, lift up on the flange, and remove the control board just like you see here. With our control board removed and our battery lead pointing towards the front of the nose, we're going to pass our motor lead right through that hole that used to be the clip. Once this is passed through, 
I'm just going to rotate the control board. I'm going to put two little small drops of hot glue right on the control board. We want to make this so we can easily break it loose so we can swap from planes. Another tip would be to use double-sided tape. Just make sure that your control board is properly fastened to the fuselage. If it jiggles, the plane's not going to fly right. Now that we have our control board glued in, we're going to go ahead and move our white connector and fasten it to the control board. With our white connector fastened, we're going to do the exact same process with our red connector. Red to red, white to white. There we go. We can now take a small piece of tape and we can use that tape to hold down our wires to keep them out of the way. With electronics on, we're going to use our fully charged battery as a weight to get our center of gravity back. So I'm going to pass through my battery here, put it all the way up in the nose, and now when I balance it, you're going to notice that it balances just perfectly. Now you can move this slightly backwards or slightly forwards to get the center of gravity you want. Keep in mind, the more nose heavy it's going to be, the faster it's going to have to fly to be able to maintain lift. The more tail heavy, the more unstable it's going to be. So go ahead and start with just slightly nose heavy and then move it back as you get more comfortable. Now before we fly, we need to bind the radio to the airplane every time. The way this is done is by first connecting your battery and turning it on your control board. You're going to notice a rapid flashing red light. Go ahead and seat your plane nice and flat on the table so it's not being moved. Now with the throttle all the way down, we're going to turn on our transmitter. You're going to notice that your fast flashing control board light is going to go to a slow flash and we're going to have a rapid flashing transmitter. Move your throttle all the way up and then all the way back down. At this point, you're going to notice that your both lights on the plane and on the transmitter are now solid. And when you get throttle, the motors work. Now one really important thing when you're testing your throttle and you wiggle it back and forth listening for the RPM changes, if it feels like it wants to turn even easier, there's a really good chance that you actually have your motor switched and you're going to need to switch those back. At this point our center of gravity is right, our radio is linked, we're ready to go fly. Alright friends, we are ready to take out our FT Easy plank out for its maiden. We got a little bit of wind here, but I think we're going to be okay here. One thing I strongly recommend, if you have a backyard similar to mine, make sure you fly it in high rates. The way we're going to have high rates is by simply pressing this button one time, and you're going to see a flashing red light. That's going to give you a sharper turn, and you don't want to fly low rates unless you're in a wide open area, or you're working with young kids, preferably both. All right, so we're going to go ahead and launch this into the wind. Our center of gravity is everything's all figured out. Let's see how she flies. And you can immediately see the benefits of having a plank here. It doesn't let you get up too sharp of an angle. And she's climbing up beautifully, even in this moderate wind. She carves through the sky really nice. Now where the canard is better in calmer wind, the FT Easy plank actually does pretty good in somewhat calm to moderate wind. I wouldn't recommend taking this into uh, into environments where maybe it's really gusty or thermalic, but this actually flies beautiful. This is also a really great airplane to fly indoors if you have a big open indoor area. She's doing great. Flying about half throttle right now. There we are. Friends, I want to thank you for being part of the Flight Test family. Also, I'm really excited for you guys to try out the FT Easy Plank along with the other three pack series. Look forward to more Easy Pack designs coming out, not only from us, but from our community in the near future. And I cannot wait to see what this does in homes, in schools, and everything in between. We'll see you next time.